What's better than zero bosses? One boss. What's better than one boss? Two bosses. Games love to throw two bosses at you at once. If you do it right, a double boss fight can be an easy way to ramp up the challenge, reuse game assets, and build up some pre-fight hype all at once. But you can't just jam two bosses together and expect it all to work. Double bosses have to be crafted so they fit together. Otherwise, you're gonna get a chaotic mess. Do it right though and you've got an instant classic fight that'll stick with a player after the game is over. Today, let's figure out how to choreograph the dance that is the double boss fight. You might have your own double wandering around, and not the fun kind, the identity theft kind. To defeat that boss, party up with today's sponsor, Aura. You ever get your identity stolen? It's real bad. A friend of mine did. He had to make a ton of calls to fix it, lots of worrying, and it took forever. Identity theft cost Americans $56 billion in 2020. There's so much to keep track of. Credit scores, leaked passwords, data breaches, unauthorized purchases. Aura is the one-stop shop that keeps track of all of that and alerts you if it sees something bad happening. Aura has a full suite of security tools inside an easy-to-use dashboard that acts as your financial security headquarters. Credit score monitoring and one-touch credit freezing, bank transaction alerts, a password manager, and antivirus and VPN to keep your computers safe. Aura watches the dark web to check if your usernames, emails, passwords, or other sensitive info got caught in a data breach. After I signed up, they found a couple passwords of mine that I had to go change. Aura has a ton of security tools ready to go, and they have a free trial for Design Doc viewers. Get a handle on your data security by signing up to a free trial at aura.com slash design doc and get your financial house in order. Thanks, Aura. Double bosses are a deceptively simple idea. If one thing good, then two thing more good. And that's not wrong. Not entirely anyway. Two things sometimes is more good. Double bosses can be extra memorable. They can be hype factories, built from an unexpected team up that you get to play your way through. Or they can be a place to bring characters back, building a new challenge from a combination of old elements. Double bosses can create interplay in ways that a single boss would have a tough time doing. They can make a player choose their path on the fly, where how the fight plays out is a direct result of the decisions made. Double bosses can be more than just two bosses fighting at the same time. But along with the opportunities for a unique fight, Pairs of bosses are prone to unique problems to avoid that depend on what type of fight a game is aiming to make. Let's start real basic. What's the cheapest, easiest, fastest way you can think of to make a double boss? We've got this one standing right here. Hmm. Um. What if... Two. Just fight two copies of the same boss at once. That seems easy. Hollow Knight clones a couple bosses very well like the Mantis Lords. After fighting your way through a tribe of deadly Mantis Warriors, you get the challenge to their leader, Zzz, a trio of Mantis Sisters. Yes, this is still a double boss. The fight is broken up into two phases. The first has you fight the Middle Sister, who teleports around the arena and swipes at you with her lance, drops on you from above, or tosses a boomerang at you from the wall. The timing's a little tricky, but it's a pretty straightforward fight. Just dodge and hit. Once she yields and retreats, the two remaining sisters step in for a two-on-one matchup. Hope you learned that first phase well, because now we're doubling up on everything. Both sisters have the same moveset, but the fight now has a different rhythm, and you have to rethink your positioning and constantly be on your toes. You'll deal with two vertical drops, one after the other. They'll pincer you with both the dash attack and the boomerang projectile. One might dash while the other drops soon after. They each might dash in quick succession, or the second one might delay a bit to throw you off. They're the same bosses, but the changing patterns make the fight completely different. And if you want even more of a challenge, there's an optional rematch in the DLC where you can fight all three sisters at once. Uh, good luck. Hollow Knight's Godmaster DLC has an even better double boss. The Nailmaster Brothers, Oro, and Mato. Like the Mantis Lords, the first phase is a one-on-one -on -one fight with just Oro that lets you get a handle on his basic moveset. The second phase brings in Mato, where again, the changing pattern over a repeated moveset makes the fight work. Unlike the Mantis Lords, each brother has a unique signature move, a dashing slash, and a cyclone spin. Careful positioning is even more important here, as it influences their attack patterns. 
If you're on one side, they'll alternate between attacking and backing off as the other follows up. If you're caught in between, they'll coordinate their slashes to pincer you. The fight is much more demanding than the Mantis Lords, as you search for brief openings to attack without leaving yourself open for the counter. The two-phase structure is a smart way to get players up to speed on a challenging fight, while the way each pair coordinates their attacks prevent unwinnable situations and make for a new memorable fight from reused components. Of course, there's only so much you can do by cloning a boss. It's not all that creative. Oromato even tried to get around it by being ever so slightly different, because a full-on clone would introduce some problems. Two copies of the exact same thing don't necessarily work together all that well. At worst, a clone double boss can feel like really obvious filler. The original Batman Arkham Asylum famously dropped the ball with its bosses. Over half of them involved this roided-up titan henchman. Maybe with a different outfit. Or maybe it's Bane. Either way, the fights are the same. From the first one to the fifth. Both the third boss and the semi-final boss throw two of them at you. It's not much harder to deal with two at once though. Maybe you pick your opportunities a little more carefully, but it's mostly the same. And considering there's like a half dozen of these guys, you're pretty good at getting rid of these titan henchmen by now. Clone bosses are not something you can drop in as a placeholder and expect to get much fun for free. Okay, so maybe cloning a boss isn't what you're looking for. What's the next easiest thing to do? What if we just reuse two different bosses? That'll fix it, right? Well, it'll fix some things. Recycling bosses into a two-on-one fight tends to work better with simpler bosses with recognizable patterns. They can fit in classic beat-em-ups like Streets of Rage 4 pretty well. Multiple bosses with distinct behaviors that mix and match can make a fight much harder and much more interesting. Streets of Rage 4 has a few stages where you're fighting cops. The boss at the end of Stage 2 is the Commissioner, a jacked-up version of Commissioner Gordon with some heavy overhead punches, super armor on most moves, and a dash and grab that's tough to dodge. In Stage 4, you deal with Special Forces Officer, Estelle, who has a ton of flippy kicks to avoid, and sometimes calls in artillery support. Each boss is challenging on their own, but you'll get to know their patterns and take care of them before too long. Stage 7 ups the stakes. On top of this moving train, Estelle returns and has figured out how to smuggle some hand grenades on board. She's calling in backup again. Watch out for the... Oh god, it's the Commissioner. Now, it'd be a little overwhelming if both bosses played identically to their original versions. The Commissioner is toned down a little. No super armor this time, and fewer different kinds of moves. Estelle acts a little more defensively, preferring to keep her distance while the Commissioner tries to bash you into submission. Even with the toned down movesets, paying attention to the attack patterns of both at once makes the fight exponentially tougher. That moveset change is crucial. The moves of two separate pre-established bosses often don't combine very well, and you're likely going to have to combine them somehow. If you try to sidestep the issue by doing something you think is clever, that might look like the Boom Boom and Pom Pom fight in Super Mario 3D Land. There are only three distinct bosses in the game, Bowser, Boom Boom, and Pom Pom. Each individual one is reused a lot over the game's 16 worlds, with some arena design tweaks to help keep the repeated fights from being exactly the same. Sometimes, though, they try to spice things up by making you fight two of them at once in the same room. Kinda. Unless you're looking closely. The bosses themselves are really simple. Boom Boom spins at you with his head exposed, which you jump on because Mario, and he ricochets around for a bit. Repeat three times, also because Mario. Pom Pom is pretty similar, but she throws a boomerang at you and moves a little differently in her invulnerable shell face. Very simple. Combine them though, and it gets a little trickier. Or it would, but despite them being in the same arena, the two of them are still separated. The room is split between a low and a high floor, and each boss stays at only one level throughout the fight. The two fights feel independent from one another, even when they're in the same room which undercuts a lot of opportunities the design of the encounter could have for interacting and overlapping attack patterns to add to the challenge or just make the strategies a little less basic. Despite being added together, the fight's just as simple as before. Other boss combos can be way too chaotic. In the Mega Man X Legacy Collection, they added an extra mode called the X Challenge. 
Here, you fight pairs of pre-existing Maverick bosses from different Mega Man X games, with a selected arsenal of special weapons. You want to fight Chill Penguin and Frost Walrus at the same time for some reason? Now you can. Most Mega Man boss fights are designed in isolation, with the attack patterns, weaknesses, AI behaviors, and sometimes the arena itself designed with just that one boss in mind. The X Challenge lets you not take any of that into consideration. It just throws both bosses at you at once and calls it a day. Attacks are a nightmare to dodge, as there's no rhythm to most of the possible fights. The screen immediately becomes a cluttered mess. Even the background color palette makes some of the bosses hard to see. When you combine two existing bosses, they're usually either very simple in design or altered to make the fight more digestible and playable. Without any customization, or at least careful selection of the bosses chosen, a double boss fight can feel like a bad ROM hack or a mod done wrong. Double bosses can do more for a game than just be a fun fight. In the right circumstances, having a couple of old bosses combined forces can become a hype factory, and long-running series have lots of material to work with. Yakuza is filled to the brim with beloved criminals, and near the top of the list is Majima. Yakuza 4 establishes more of his past with his brother-in-arms, Sajima. Over that game, you watch these two tragically fall out and slowly reunite through crime drama shenanigans and shirtless fights. By the end of their character arcs, these two become a strong dynamic duo. In Yakuza Like a Dragon, the series goes through a soft reboot with the gameplay and cast. Most of the past characters in the series were set aside for new characters. Sometimes, though, the game dusts off some fan favorites. Like Majima. He's back, and you're fighting him. And halfway through the fight, oh my god, it's Sajima. Look at what they're doing. It doesn't hurt either that the fight's very good. The Majima fight goes from a fun callback to a double fun, double callback fight, and works as a great hype moment for longtime fans. Okay. So there are plenty of advantages to reusing bosses in a double boss fight, but there's something limiting about it. It's gonna be more work, but what if we start designing double boss fights from the ground up? Two bosses provide a challenge unique to most games, even when combat is focused on dealing with groups. Having two bosses to deal with simultaneously creates a lot of intimidating yet fun and nuanced problems to handle on the fly, especially when the bosses are different in ways that complement each other. In Hades, when you reach the end of the third area, you're pitted against Theseus, the former hero king of Athens, and Asterius, the Bull of Minos. These two are carefully designed to be a contrasting duo both in character and gameplay. Theseus is a pompous, punchable jerk whose demeanor miraculously never changes, no matter how many times you beat him, and Asterius is a stoic, honorable warrior who's pretty chill. The pair's stark contrast extends to how each of them fight. Asterius is an aggressive close-range brawler with heavy melee combos, leaping attacks, and a tracking bull charge that you will need to avoid by taking cover by a pillar. His attacks get heavier when his health hits the halfway mark. Theseus is a more defensive fighter that prefers to attack from a distance with his spear. He has a shield out at all times that you have to flank to do damage. When he's at half health, things get way more chaotic. Theseus summons the aid of one of the eight Olympian gods at random, who give him a new attack. Each attack is slightly different based on the god, but they generally fill the arena with a pattern of AoE circles to avoid. And when the two are together, they can team up for a big shockwave or a fastball special. Theseus and the Minotaur play off of each other extremely well. They have distinct roles that are easy to understand and provide choices to make on the fly when fighting them. Depending on your build, you will need to decide whether to focus down one or try to take care of them at the same time. No matter your choice, you can't sleep on either of these two. You're always on high alert so you don't get blindsided by the other, and each of their second phases are a force to be reckoned with. It's an intimidating fight that can easily end a run if you're not careful, or if your build just isn't quite right. Theseus and Asterius make a great team that provides a real challenge no matter how many times you face them. Lots of double bosses have specific roles for each member of the pair, like offense and defense, or healing and attacking. Though sometimes leaning into those roles too hard creates an overly simple fight. In No More Heroes 2, you fight New Destroy Man. This guy was literally split in two in the first game, and both parts are back as cyborgs to fight you, two on one. One is a close range brawler, while the other snipes you from as far away as possible. No problem there, until you take down the closer one first. 
Once the fight is just against the ranged cyborg, the pacing slows to a crawl. The sniper continues to keep his distance, flying around the arena and landing in places you can just barely reach. You have to wait around until the AI decides to jump to the ground and try to revive his partner, where you can jump in and get a few free attacks. He'll run away, fly around for a bit, maybe take another pot shot at you, and then come back to try and revive again. That's it. If you run up to him too quickly, he'll likely just fly away. If you try to chase him down, he'll keep flying away faster than you can keep up, and probably get an easier chance to revive his buddy in the process. You just don't have the tools at your disposal to take him out at range for any real damage. So the fight slows down to a chip damage contest that saps the energy out of what had been a fun fight. The weird design turns it into a slog. If you get it right, double bosses where both characters have unique roles can create a nuanced fight with more layers than you might pull off with a single boss. There's an interesting dynamic that pops up in a double boss fight. Since there's two things to deal with, what happens when you take one of them out? Different choices make the fight play out differently. Does nothing happen? One goes down and the other just acts as they were? Well, if you got through fighting two things at once, how hard is taking out the remaining half going to be? If nothing happens, the fight might all of a sudden become very easy, and that might be what you want. But you can do way more complex things, too. Slower-paced strategic games like turn-based RPGs can really benefit from the extra strategy options that a double boss can unlock. In Bug Fables, there are a couple of encounters against a rival team. A vain diva moth called, uh, Mothiva, and her wasp bodyguard, Zasp. Zasp is attack-oriented, with multi-hit moves and the ability to boost his damage for two turns. Mothiva has tons of attack and support abilities. She can hit your whole party at once, raise her partner's defense, use the game's turn relay mechanic to give Zasp an extra attack, and she can even revive him back to low health. You'd think that would make taking her out first a no-brainer, but if you do that, Zasp gets a permanent attack boost, which can be devastating in a game where every hit point counts. Even targeting Mothiva at all gives her bodyguard a bonus. Attacking either one ends up creating complications that you have to account for. The wider variety of options that a second enemy character opens up makes the fight with these two much more interesting than either of them would be alone. Since most every double boss involves fighting two things, they usually will present the player with a choice. What should they prioritize attacking first? Depending on the roles the bosses have, it might be obvious. If one of the two is a healer, taking that one out first will probably shorten up the fight. If a long distance boss is too hard to catch, you'd probably want to deal with the closer half first but some pairings can make for more interesting choices. Look at the Ornstein and Smo fight in the first Dark Souls. Smo is a big, slow berserker with a wide, heavy hammer attack. Ornstein is faster and more precise with his spear. They're a classic Dark Souls boss, where you're managing the positioning of the two, minding their attacks and waiting for solid openings to strike. It's a great fight, but what makes it stand out is that you're given an interesting choice in how to approach it. Depending on which one of the two you take out first, the remaining boss gets a powered up second phase. The choice you make is the trick. Fighting a more powerful Smo is the easier of the two to deal with, but Ornstein is more difficult to take out in the initial phase, as he's smaller and faster, and has Smo's wider attacks covering him. Do you want to take the more difficult fight head on, or wait until the battlefield clears out a bit and save the challenging part for later? Ornstein and Smo's synergy and second phase choice make for a challenging fight where there's no clear correct answer to how to approach it, and the same double boss fight can unfold in a bunch of different ways. Where Dark Souls presents the power-up idea as a choice for the player to make, Devil May Cry 3 uses the same idea as a punishment. Agni and Rudra are a pair of ogre-like demons standing in your way. Maybe you try to focus down the health of just one of them first classic mistake. The other one is now way stronger. Good luck. If you split the damage more evenly before taking one down, the second one shouldn't last too much longer. The game even tries to suggest that you operate that way. As you're learning the rhythm of their attacks and getting better at breaking their guard, swapping between the two will feel pretty natural. These two are a classic example of a double boss that forces you to carefully consider how you split your attention. Okay, Let's take one more big step back. Double bosses are a unique type of fight. If you're feeling even more creative, 
the double boss fight format can give you a lot of freedom to design a unique experience. Stereo Lovers in Sayonara Wild Hearts is not a traditional boss fight at all, but it uses the double theme to make something you haven't seen before. You're up against twins, and their opening song is a back and forth between two parallel worlds. On the beat, your track shifts from one world to another, and your positioning carries over between the two. You have to look ahead and remember where you're supposed to stand, then time your movements with the music so you're in the right place during the shift. You're shifting your attention from one situation to another, just like in a more run-of-the-mill double boss fight. But in the context of how Sayonara Wild Hearts plays, the double boss gets a different meaning to create one of the most memorable parts of the game. Since there's two parts of a double boss, what's forcing you to even have both of them be in the same place? Near the end of Nier Automata's campaign, you'll ride an elevator up a tower to encounter this spherical robot named Koshi. Go fight. Partway through, the camera cuts away and your other character is flying up the side of the tower fighting a similar robot, Roshi, in a shmup style sequence. Partway through that, the camera cuts back to the elevator for another round with Koshi, then back to the shmup then back to the elevator. Back and forth you go, faster and faster, until you're both at the top of the tower. The two separate fights fuse together, and now you're fighting both at once. Even at this point, you're still swapping characters periodically. The framing that Nier Automata uses throughout the fight does a ton to make it stand out. There's also a ton of story context tied in here that I'm not gonna spoil. You go do it. I don't think we talked enough about every double boss ever, so you're gonna have to tag team in for me down in the comments. Let's talk about some more great double bosses, how their developers altered their gameplay to make them fit, and the unique setups and framing that made those fights so memorable. Maybe next video we'll talk about the elusive triple boss.